JAMA Network. Shoulder pain is the third most common musculoskeletal complaint among patients seeking medical care. And rotator cuff disease is the most common cause of shoulder pain seen by physicians. In a rational clinical examination review in the August 28, 2013 issue of JAMA, Dr. Job Hermans and his colleagues from Erasmus MC University Medical Center Rotterdam in the Netherlands review the medical literature to assess the diagnostic accuracy of physical examination compared to imaging or surgery for diagnosing rotator cuff pathology. The rotator cuff comprises tendon insertions from four muscles, the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis muscles, together known as the sits muscles. The sits muscles initiate movement at the shoulder joint and they stabilize the head of the humerus in the relatively shallow scapular glenoid fossa. The rotator cuff also includes a subacromial bursa, which eases movement between the supraspinatus and overlying acromion and corcoacromial ligament. Rotator cuff disease or pathology refers to nonspecific tendinopathy of any of the rotator cuff muscles, partial or full thickness tears of rotator cuff tendons, or bursitis of the subacromial bursa. Beyond trauma, the exact mechanism for rotator cuff disease is unclear and is often attributed to intrinsic age and repetitive use-related processes. Pathology of the rotator cuff leads to impingement of bones and tendons and other alterations that manifest as pain that is characteristically worse, sharp, and stabbing with overhead motion. Rotator cuff pathology also causes weakness, and in the case of rotator cuff tears, loss of active motion. In reviewing the literature on the accuracy of physical exam for detecting rotator cuff disease, the authors of this issue's review found that the scientific quality of the literature was generally low, and all studies were conducted and patients referred to specialists for evaluation, so the findings are not strictly applicable to unselected patients in primary care settings. Within those contexts, the authors report six main findings. First, the presence or absence of pain did not distinguish patients with from those without rotator cuff tears. Second, atrophy of the infraspinatus muscle made rotator cuff disease more likely. Third, only one pain provocation test the painful arc test in which the patient abducts their arm 180 degrees was useful. Pain beginning at about 60 degrees of abduction distinguished rotator cuff from other pathology. Other frequently used pain tests, like the Hawkins test, in which the examiner internally rotates the arm while the patient flexes both arm and shoulder 90 degrees, and the near test in which the examiner flexes the arm 180 degrees in slight abduction, had little value, at least as reported in studies. Fourth, a positive lag test where the patient cannot maintain their arm externally rotated to their side or internally rotated behind their back was accurate for diagnosing a full rotator cuff tear, while a negative internal rotational lag test effectively excluded a tear. Fifth, a positive drop arm test in which the patient cannot resist downward pressure on an arm abducted at 90 degrees, leading to dropping of the arm, increased the likelihood of any rotator cuff problem. And finally, pain or weakness when externally rotating the shoulder against resistance seemed accurate for diagnosing disease. Combinations of these clinical tests seem not to be consistently better than individual findings. Based on the review findings, the authors conclude that the literature supports use of the painful arc test, lag tests, the drop arm test, and the external rotation resistance test in specialty referral settings to diagnose or exclude rotator cuff pathology. And they advise generalist physicians to practice using those exam techniques given their diagnostic accuracy.